Johnny K and this is part 22. The last thing we have to do is adjust our blower belt so there's a little tension on it. What happens with the blower with all this aluminum is it starts to grow as it gets hot. So if you set your belt real tight, the blower itself makes the really cool winding noise because the belt's really tight. She winds really loud. But actually that belt's too tight. What happens is as the aluminum grows, you're stretching that belt and you're putting all the force on the front of the nose here and on the crank, you're, you're fighting each other. So basically, you put your belt on, you slide your idler pulley out, and uh, you want about a half inch to one inch of play on the belt. So on your blower belt, just come up to it, you slide out your idler pulley to put some tension on the belt, come up to the belt, and between the top pulley and the bottom pulley, try to find a center, and you just want to push on the belt, and you should just be able to push it in about a half inch to one inch. And that's it. There's another method some guys like to do is when the <clears throat> everything's all tight, your other pulley is tightened. They say you should be able to take the belt and slide it on the upper pulley. If you can't slide this belt on the upper pulley when it's cold, your belt's too tight. So those are the two options uh, for adjusting the uh, blower belt. And then once it's adjusted, go ahead, take your torque wrench, and this uses a 15 16 socket, and tighten it to 60 foot pounds of torque. The blower bolts here, these get torqued to 25 foot pounds of torque. the timing light you can see on the fluid dampener there's zero and then they go in two degrees two four six eight ten degrees and then I put a yellow mark on the 16 degree mark and a white mark on the 18 degree mark when using the timing light I can just look at the yellow mark and go oh that's 16 or if it's on the white mark oh that's 18 degrees So you don't have to do that, it's just something I do and for myself, now that I gotta wear glasses, it just makes it easier for me to see.
The last thing I want to talk about is the radiator. Mine is from Be Cool Radiators. I bought it through Summit. It was $280. And it's basically direct replacement for a 1972 Chevelle with a big block Chevy motor in it. It's for a manual transmission, so there's no extra ports on there to hook up your automatic transmission lines. However, you can get that if you have automatic transmission. It's a really great radiator. Just to do a comparison of radiators, my first radiator was a five core copper made radiator. My car never saw over 190. It could be 100 degrees out, I'll be idling through traffic for about an ah, hour, and this car never overheat at all. 190, no problems. That was a great radiator. The side tank ended up blowing out a little bit, so I had to get a new radiator. So. I got a four core copper radiator. In that same scenario, 95 degrees out, idling for about a half hour to an hour, sitting there in traffic, idling, just putting, her, putting along. Uh, the car got up to about 210. Never went over 210. And with this Be Cool aluminum radiator, same scenario, 95 degrees, just idling, can sit there idle all day long. Never gets over 200 degrees. So I'm, I'm happy. So, got to save some weight. Yeah, so we'll take a closer look at the uh, radiator. Okay, so here's a Be Cool radiator. It's actually a really nice radiator. And the thing I liked about when I opened it up in the box, all these fins look just like this. I had maybe one or two that were slightly bent just a little bit. And I'm talking just a little. Okay, let's talk about fans once for a second. Be Cool recommends that your fans stay about a quarter inch off of the radiator fins. And you don't want to use the old style plastic zip ties that go through the fins. You really want to secure your fans in a different way. When I secure the fans to the radiator, I end up buying the Be Cool, these little aluminum brackets. They're four brackets, they're 65 bucks. Then I bought the Be Cool little rubber quarter inch pads. That was five bucks for four of them. And then basically the hardware, it's just a button head bolt. Okay, and then in the middle here what I did, I just kind of made this myself. When I had the fans, I put the fans together, I epoxied them together. Then I put a metal clip on here, just made an L-shaped bracket all sheet metal and got some uh, stainless steel screws. I uh, screwed it into the epoxy to make sure that my fans were nice and tight and secure. Then down below, kinda hard to see, but that little bracket right there, basically it, it attaches to my fans, and then it goes down and uh, it attaches to the bottom of the radiator to support the fans in the middle. Just put a little piece of rubber in here, quarter inch rubber, RTV'd it in, and then it matches the same thickness as the Be Cool rubbers. Be Cool says your fans should be a quarter inch off of the aluminum fins. And that's uh, what I did to secure my fans. And then this top piece here, I just made that up to uh, support the radiator. Now under it, I do have the rubber bushings. You don't want the stainless steel rubbing on the aluminum. You don't want to wear a hole out in your radiator so you got to have some rubber support so I just got these rubber mounts you can order them from any parts house let's talk radiator hoses that hose down there that's an inch and three quarter outlet the water pump right there that's almost two inches so right in the middle they make a reducer you can get that right at the all parts store. That happens just to be a plastic reducer made for radiator hoses, three bucks. That's how you can make two oddball size hoses fit. So I'll give you those part numbers in case there's any other hot rodders out there that kind of have to custom make their own hoses to make it work. And then this upper hose, I'll give you that part number two. On that thermostat housing, you can get a 90, a 15 degree, a 45 degree. That one right there, that's a 15 degree. And it just kicks out just enough to get a good angle 
going up to the inlet on the radiator. So I just want to point that out that they do make different degree thermostat housings. If you go with the billet specialties uh, bracket, alternator bracket, I will give you the uh, belt number that I use that works good. I had a different belt on there. When you really got on it, the belt would come off. It would slip right off the pulleys. This belt stays on good and tight, doesn't slip off anymore. I will give you that part number. Here's a carburetor number. Give them a call. Order your carburetors. AED. It's basically a Holley carburetor, but they uh, totally rework it.